Good morning. It is a Wednesday morning. wanted to talk about work capacity and powerlifting, work capacity and strength. It's um, something I definitely overlook in my personal training for myself, not for others, because work capacity is pretty much what everyone needs. Essentially, basically, it's a fancy word or the new kind of slang word, not even a slang word, just a cool way of saying endurance, right? Uh, a lot of the time when someone benches for the very first time or they haven't benched for six months uh, and they start benching, it's like their, their third working set that's near failure. They're not able to maintain um, quality of movement. The bar is now, since they haven't benched in a while, the bars are already all over the place. And because they're tired, it's even more of a messy set. So something that I've kind of been thinking about in my own training that I need to start doing more of is improving work capacity. And one of the reasons why I'm drawing the powerlifting in the first place is because I'm less likely to get hurt, if that makes any sense. I used to run a lot. I did the marathons and did endurance. I really wasn't very good, but I, I, did, a, I did a full marathon, did a bunch of halves and some 10Ks uh, back way before 2010. And um, I remember that it was very shitty. But my point is, is that because of my poor movement patterns and a lot of my kind of stuff that I'm learning now with mobility and learning how to move better, uh, I don't handle high reps very well because I can't maintain good quality of movement. So a lot of the people that are able to do lots of reps, lots of sets, lots of um, lots of just basically grinding kind of stuff, heavy weights, 10 rep maxes that are really good, is because they have good movement quality. So it's kind of like those two things. So that's one of the main things that's really important when building a strength base is obviously the strength base is really just also a way to build endurance because you're trying to build a base of strength. Because essentially think about this, being able to do 225 for five repetitions on a bench, just as an example, and then also doing being able to do 225 for five sets. I saw this guy, Ben Seth, super strong guy, did nine sets of nine of 315 that's what he posted on his Instagram and I'm just like holy crap that's a crazy amount of work capacity obviously he's 300 265 pounds he's a heavy guy but he's still very very strong with a very good work capacity so what I would do or kind of some stuff that I'm thinking about after my deadlift meet and after I get back from vacation is to start working on work capacity the only biggest challenge I find with work capacity is that um, it's harder to do high reps or it's harder to do low reps like if you're trying to work in 90 percent so 85 percent to really focus on building strength as may of you some of you may know i'm really focused on doing three by three with the bench it seems to be making some decent progress it's a very small amount of volume that allows me to stay focused and sometimes i'll do something afterwards like some higher volume sets uh that kind of help focus on hypertrophy and then continuing to improve my technique but um uh, for squats, I've been doing singles, doubles, triples, uh, sometimes sets of five, sometimes sets of six. I did a six, six by six two weeks ago with 275 with a squat, and that was freaking, it was six by six pause squats, and that shit was grueling. And um, I think what I'm going to start to do is uh, when I get back uh, from vacation from Disneyland with my family, I'm going to go ahead and start improving my work capacity. And the reason for this is sort of like, um, there's twofold. One, it obviously helps improve me, helps me burn more calories, which means I'm doing more reps and sets. Um, ten workouts, ten uh, time working out tends to be longer. I mean, my workouts will always be the same time, about 90 minutes, but the, the rest periods will be shorter and there will be more reps, um, or may, more, or there might be the same amount of rest periods, but um, just more repetitions. And the whole purpose of doing this, working in lower percents, under 80%, or even under 75%, is really the focus on improving the ability to do more work. So as I get, when I cycle back into heavier lifting, I have more endurance to handle more sets. So probably right now I can probably do three sets of five with 315, maybe three sets of six. Um, if I, that's probably what I can do. So maybe after I do this cycle of high repetition work, I will move it up to. Uh, I'll probably do six, uh, probably five sets of uh, five sets of six or three fifteen, something like that. And the purpose of this again is just to be able to get more work done in the gym. The only problem is the volume is going to be high, and because I love to, or it's going to be higher. I won't say it's high, and because I really love to do high rep sets or I like doing low reps, is that I need to make sure I tame my volume. So this is kind of where programming becomes really, really important because. I think for a lot of people who love to lift heavy weights, they get too stuck in the high reps or high high percentages of their one repetition max, and they try to 
complete the same amount of volume and it just doesn't work the way it should simply because it's just it just doesn't you know you just get too beat up maybe you're able to be motivated and really grind through but you can't make any consistent progress because you're beating the shit out of yourself so it's important that we're program design it's really important um, so I'll be looking at some stuff out there I, I did like the Candida linear program um, for work capacity I just my main, my main thing is I, I am program hopping but my, I just I, I have the same sort of mindset sort of towards the program that I have with times the times the <coughs> excuse me <coughs> type uh, I have the same type of mindset towards the program I have but it's either shifted more towards strength or it's more shifted towards endurance so that's essentially what it is so it can be strength which is low reps under five or even more competition lifting which is basically threes and twos and ones and then of course moving towards kind of building a strength base endurance capacity improving overall uh, ability to, to handle more sets so then that would be moving the needle the other direction which is a little bit more endurance base just a, and when I say moving like typically I seem to be working I mean I don't really use percentages a whole lot I use a lot of RPEs now but it seems to be I'm around the you know the mid 80s uh, percentiles, so that means I'll be dropping down to the the 70s. And uh, like uh, I guess an example I'll probably use, and this is kind of how I'm thinking out loud, is that I'm doing three by three with bench. That's sort of what I'm doing right now every week. And and if I do something afterwards, I'll do like uh, I did I think I did five sets of three sets of six, right with 240. So what I'll do instead is I'll do three sets of eight or three sets of 10 instead again focus on improving that ability to work, do more work capacity I mean six is great it's fun because it's heavier um, and a 240 feels lighter especially coming off of a 270 but I think it's gonna be really important for me to really work on the reps and get more get myself up there and again a lot of this thing about reps that's the rep segment segment of um of Brendan Lilly's cube so it's sort of those things it's a rep his rep cycle he has a, a power cycle and then he has a um, speed cycle so it's kind of essentially I'm sort of doing my own style of cube philosophy if that makes any sense. Anyways, those are just some thoughts. Um, anyways, thanks for watching.